I recently saw Avatar The Way of Water in 3D. It's been a long time since I've seen a 3D movie. 13 years, actually, since Avatar 1 in 2009. Sitting there in the theater watching blue people do stuff, I was suddenly reminded of something that I realized 13 years ago. 3D movies are not immersive. In fact, they're the opposite. The 3D was an obstacle to my immersion in the story, which is a problem because the whole selling point of 3D in film is that it's supposed to carry you further into the action on screen. So here are four reasons why it does the reverse. Reason number one, the focus convergence issue. This is actually something that this little baby covered on the channel 11 years ago. The basic problem is this. When we look at an object, our eyes change the shape of their lens to focus at the distance of that object. Think of it as a plane moving toward and away from the eyes, depending on what you're looking at. But to facilitate our depth perception, our two eyes also converge on that object, rotating slightly inwards to create a triangle drawn by the object and each eye. Now, for all of human history, the focus distance and the convergence point were in the same place, but 3D movies complicate that because the focus distance is fixed at the theater screen, say 60 feet away from you, and doesn't change, while the convergence point is moving back and forth with the 3D image, this separation between focus and convergence takes your brain a little extra time to compensate, which over a two, three hour movie can cause headaches or eye fatigue. Reason number two, 3D movies are dark. Regular 2D movies are projected at 16 foot Lamberts, which are units of luminance. 3D movies are significantly dimmer than this, and that has to do with those special glasses that you wear. Basically, 3D movies project two different images onto the screen, and each lens of the glasses is polarized to see just one of those images blocking out the other. The brain puts the two images back together and in doing so creates the illusion of depth. The problem is that each eye only gets half the full image, and so the brightness of the movie is effectively halved as well. Then the lenses themselves, being filters, cut the light even more, and 3D movies get projected at only around 3.5 foot Lamberts, at which point we start to lose color perception, so filmmakers have to do special color grades to compensate. Some great theaters can push it a little bit brighter, but the vast majority can't, and others offer worse than 3.5. As Christopher Nolan said, on an experiential level, I find the dimness of the image extremely alienating. Reason number three. 3D makes theater screens look smaller. I saw Avatar 2 on a nice big screen at my local theater. I was sitting middle row, center seat, ready to be engulfed in the world of Pandora. Then I put my 3D glasses on and the screen instantly shrank. Suddenly this big screen seemed, well, it almost seemed like the size of my TV at home. Legendary film editor Walter Murch described having the same reaction to 3D in a letter to Roger Ebert. Somehow the glasses gather in the image, even on a huge IMAX screen, and make it seem half the scope of the same image when looked at without the glasses. After doing a lot of research, I'm still not entirely sure why this happens, but the lack of bigness, the characters that sometimes look miniaturized like they're in a tilt shift image, diminishes the scale and scope and decreases the immersion. It didn't feel like I was in Pandora, but watching it through a window in the distance. 
Reason number four, 3D forces you to look only at what's in focus. Now this is an example of something I didn't realize I missed until it was gone. Cameras, like our eyes, have what's called depth of field, that plane of distance from the lens within which objects are in focus. If the depth of field is sufficiently deep, the whole image can be in focus. If it's shallow, only a small plane will be in focus and the stuff in front of and behind that plane will blur. Cinematographers use shallow depth of field for aesthetic reasons, but also to direct our attention to something in the frame. When depth of field is deep, you're invited to scan and analyze and admire the whole image, not just the main action. But you can also do this when depth of field is shallower. Just because something's out of focus doesn't mean you can't tell what it is or shouldn't look at it. Taking in the whole composition, choosing what to look at in the frame and when, is part of what makes the viewing experience immersive. Watching Avatar, when I try to scan the frame, I noticed that what was out of focus wasn't just blurry, but dizzying, uncomfortable to look at for more than a second because my eyes were trying to focus the blur. This woozy discomfort effectively traps you inside the depth of field, letting you appreciate only a fraction of the frame. And with each new shot, you need to take a couple of milliseconds to find the critical focus, and it's not always automatically obvious. I found this extremely distracting and constricting. You know, I realize I've been talking a lot about cinematic immersion in recent videos, and that's because it's the highest goal of every filmmaker. You want the audience to have a deep involvement in the narrative on screen. That involvement can be physical, can be emotional, intellectual, or all three at once. For a long time, 3D has been billed as an aid to immersion, an intensifier of it. But the advertising is false. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. By the way, if you enjoy 3D movies, more power to you. I'm happy if you're happy. This episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you don't know, you can use Squarespace to make websites for anything you might need. Want to make a site for your video content? Well, you can upload your video library directly to Squarespace and even sell access to that content. Or you can use the Squarespace Video Studio app to make pro-level videos within Squarespace and host your content on beautiful pages designed with their easy to use blogging tools. Basically, a Squarespace site is gonna make whatever you're sharing or selling look professional, and that's gonna help you get the word out, whatever that word actually is. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com nerdwriter for 10% off your first purchase. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.